All right, good morning, church. How are we doing, everybody? Woo! Let's all stand, amen? Happy Mother's Day! If you're next to a mom, even if she's not yours, give her a hug, amen? Come on. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all y'all, amen? <laughs> Glad you guys are here. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. God, we just thank you for all that you are, Holy Spirit. We welcome you in this place. God, I ask, release joy, release freedom in this place. God, we just say we love you today. We praise you, God. We worship you, God. I pray right now, Jesus. God, for anybody who's today is hard, God, maybe they lost their mom, maybe they had a bad relationship with their mom. God, I pray today, Holy Spirit, may you touch hearts, God. May you heal. May you change lives, God. I thank you, God, for your love for us today, God. We praise you. We worship you, God. We pray. Answer prayers today, God, in the hearts of moms, grandmothers, God. We just say we love you. We thank you for all that you are. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on, let's worship.
give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that. Church. Lift your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise to you only. Great. Oh 
shout a praise, amen. We thank you, Lord.
screen You're here with me In the darkness You never leave I got a mercy You're walking with me I surrender Anxiety All the striving It has to cease In this moment You're still the key This is a gift you have given to breathe A sound mind for the spirit of fear A sound mind so that I can see clearly A sound mind, your spirit is here A sound mind, a sound mind mm, A sound mind There's a table where we meet It's in the presence of my enemies I will listen and I will feast On every word you are speaking to me I remember who you are You are my fortress and my God How many know the beginning of worship begins in gratitude in our hearts? Amen. 
Come on, how many of you guys have just an overwhelming heart to thank the Lord, not only for your mom, but for his goodness, for his faithfulness, for his gratefulness in our lives, amen? amen. Come on, God, we thank you, Jesus. God, we thank you for your blood, God, that was shed on our behalf, God, to cleanse us from all of our sin, yesterday, today, and forever, God. Again, we thank you, God. Thank you that you are alive, God. We thank you that you for your presence, God. We thank you that we restore, God, that you heal, that you reconcile today, Jesus. God, so I pray, may everything that's been dead, broken, God, be healed today in Jesus' name, God. Restore what the enemy has taken, God. Bring back what the enemy has stolen, God. We just say we love you, God. God, we praise you. We worship you for all that you are. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on. And this last song, you guys, as your act of worship, if you feel free um, to come up and partake in communion, the elements, his blood, his body for you, feel free to do that. Amen. Come on, let's sing this.
Bridge Central Coast, you guys. We're so glad that you're here. Introduce yourself to somebody you don't know. Give somebody a hug, amen? Come on. Well, good morning, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> I'm thankful that my mom raised me in the church and raised me to know Jesus. And I'm thankful that I get to be a mom as well. So happy Mother's Day to everyone. I'm here to, um, and my name is Amy, by the way, <laughs> if you don't know me. Hello. Uh, I'm here to give you the tithe message this morning. So I'm going to be reading out of John chapter 6, if you'd like to turn with me there. We are going to talk about the story that a lot of people know about where Jesus feeds about 5,000 men. And we don't know how many women and children were also there. Probably a lot. Um, but we're going to start with verse 5. So he says, lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a large crowd was coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he knew what he would do. And Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get just a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they for so many? And Jesus said, Have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in this place. So the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, just as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. All right, so first off, one thing that jumps out to me from this passage is there was a young person who brought food. Can anyone guess why there was a young person who brought food? His mom packed his lunch. <laughs> Thank you, moms, for packing the lunch. <laughs> uh, so I thought, I thought that was funny that God pointed that out to me <laughs> for Mother's Day. Um, so then the second thing that, that stuck out to me was that Jesus asked some questions to his disciples. First off, he asked, where will we buy bread? Philip, one of his disciples, being very practical and budget conscious, does not answer Jesus' question, but he begins to tell Jesus how much money it would take to be able to feed all these people. So he kind of takes it in a different direction, and Jesus just asked him, where will we get enough food? He already knew where he was going to provide, right? So how many times do we answer Jesus' questions to us with reasons why we can't do something? Why we can't do what he asks us or stating our limitations. What is Jesus asking of you? The other thing that, that stuck out to me was that this story is present in all four of the gospels. And in Mark's version, he asks his disciples to go see how many loaves that they have. He asks them to go look. So Andrew comes back with one small kid's lunch that we see. And I can just imagine the feeling of like, oh, I'm supposed to find all this food and, and all I have is this little bit. Should I even present this to Jesus? Should I even give this? It's not, it's not going to be enough. But he does it anyways, right? He actually does what Jesus commanded and he went and saw and he brings it back no matter how small. How many times does Jesus ask what we have in our hands, but we are ashamed of what we have to offer for fear of it not being good enough? What do you have in your hands? So one small child's lunch obviously was not enough to feed everyone, but Jesus is the one who provides and he multiplies, right? So what was given to Jesus was then blessed, and as he blessed it, he then gave it back to the disciples. Did it multiply right away? The food did not multiply right away. 
He just blessed it. He had to give it and distribute it to his disciples. And then they in, in turn had to pass it around. And as they passed it around, it multiplied and a miracle happened. So unless it's given, it's not going to be multiplied. But God has the authority to do that. Amen? So um, I'm just encouraged by this because I feel like, you know, we all have opportunities that God gives to us um, to multiply things that we have in our lives. But it's our job to give it over to him to see what he'll do. So I can also relate to... Um, you know, Philip in this story, as he was just looking at the limitations and saying, God, this is what I have. And this is how much money it's going to take. And I don't know what you're going to do here. And so I can relate to that because I tend to look at, you know, everything in the natural and then tell God what I don't have <laughs> or tell God, this is the only little bit that I have to give. What can you possibly do with this? I, you know, like I'm nothing. What can you do with this gift? But I love how in this story, all Jesus has to do is breathe life onto that. And it, and it turns into something that no one ever expected. So I believe that this is just a good story in the Bible that we have to point to the fact that Jesus doesn't want, um, he doesn't want us to just look at what we merely are required to do to serve him. He's not looking to only... Um, have people who want to give a certain percentage just to satisfy the requirement of being called a Christian or following Jesus. He's looking at, he's looking for people like this child who are willing to go about their daily life and just offer up what they have in their hands, a life of service to the king so that he can breathe life into that. Amen. Amen. So aren't you thankful that God wants to use you for that as well? So I know that in my life, you know, we haven't always um, been prosperous with money. And in our early adulthood, um, there were definitely a lot of times where uh, we didn't know where we were going to get the money to pay for some things. But we were faithful in tithing and giving when we felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to give to other people. And God has always been faithful to provide everything that our family has needed and to give us more than, than we even could ask for. So I am grateful. So we have four ways to give here, as usual, on the screen behind me. If you um, feel prompted by the Holy Spirit to give with money, those are the ways you can do it. And I would just encourage you to um, ask the Holy Spirit what he wants from you. If it's money, if it's time, if it's serving other people, ask him what he wants to do with your life. Amen? Well, I'm going to pray over the offering. Father, we just thank you so much that you invite us to partner with you. You invite us to um, live prosperous lives, not just with finances, but in all things you, you want us to prosper. And Lord, so I just pray over this offering today that you would send it out to the places that you have designed for it to go to prosper your kingdom, to build your kingdom here on earth, Lord. And may heaven come and your will be released. In Jesus' name, I pray that you would bless everyone who gives. Amen. Amen. All right, well, we're going to have Katie come up for announcements. Awesome. Thank you. Amy's pretty amazing. I'm very blessed to call her one of my good friends. So she has gifts that she gets to bless us all with in her beautiful voice when she leads worship. So we're thankful that she gives that away to us faithfully. Happy Mother's Day. Uh, I had the ultimate mother fail today and I'm gonna let you guys in on that. Um, you know, your mo the mother's worst nightmare is forgetting her child. I did that today on Mother's Day. I left one kid at home still sleeping in bed. <laughs> so happy Mother's Day. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, sh I showed up to church and thankfully all of her friends keep really close tabs on her and I didn't even get all the way in the door before they were like, Where's Adley? 
where's Adley? And I was like, she's here. No, she's not. <laughs> yes, she is. She came with her dad. No, she didn't. So I ran home and sure enough, she was still sleeping in her bed. So happy Mother's Day. I bet you're doing a lot better than me. <laughs> so. Uh, anyways, with that, can we have Brian and Denise Janopoulos join us on stage? For those of you who um, don't know Denise, she has been faithfully serving at, well, started with City Church, and then as the bridge became the bridge, continued to just serve our young kids. She is just um, so peaceful and calm and has a beautiful demeanor about her. I've actually known Brian and Denise since I was very little. <laughs> so it's been fun to come full circle and, and as an adult still be able to have, have you in my life. So um, I'm going to pass this. You may, yeah. You know, when I was um, many years ago, I worked at uh, the Mid-State Bank Mortgage Department and um, that's where I met Katie's dad, Pat Sparrow, because he worked there as well. And um, he invited me to his church. Um, it was Stones of Fire was the name of it oh, yeah. back then. And um, that I was blessed to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And that began my um, journey out of religion into relationship. And um, I was also blessed to work with Miss Belinda who was in the children's ministry, and Katie was in our class, and now she's my pastor. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, God is amazing how he orders our steps, and um, I'm so blessed, and I just thank you guys. I'm going to miss my yeah. church family immensely, but um, I know that we will remain connected for eternity. So, love you guys. <laughs> I'm going to give this to Pam, too, because, again, you were in City Church. Denise, as you guys don't know, she's, she's like a butterfly in the kingdom, right? Um, she's one of the most sweetest, just gent gentlest. Uh, I don't even know if that's a word, gentlest, right? But um, <laughs> my dictionary. Uh, she's so genuine. And, again, this, the bridge doesn't happen because of us on stage. The bridge happens because of everybody behind the scenes that are doing stuff. And so again, she's faithfully served. Um, we've been around almost, it'll be six years this fall coming up. Um, she's been since the beginning um, and even before that with um, City Church as well, just faithfully serving our children, children, not just holding them and making sure that you're able to be in service and be able to receive what God has for you, but really loving on our children children and teaching them the word of God, teaching them that they're loved, that they belong, um, that they have a father who's there for them when everybody else might not be, you know? And so again, it's, um, it's the countless hours that she served in that and just her heart. And then even as we transitioned from city church to the bridge, she was there helping us get our finances in order and getting everything in order so that we were dotting every I and crossing every T and making sure they were right under the Lord. And so again, from the bottom of my heart, from all of us, not only are you a blessing to us in our lives, but you're a blessing in the kingdom. We're so grateful. We're excited for you guys for this next season. Um, you good looking husband, man. Come on, man, dude. Hey, Brian. And he's an amazing guy, amazing heart, always been supportive and faithful and sharing. Again, so many people's spouses, like you might not serve, but you allow your spouse to serve. And again, that's sharing as well. That's, that's, that's serving in the kingdom as well. So again, we're thankful for you. We're thankful for your heart. Every time I see you from the first Easter on, you're just encouraging and just a blessing. So we love you guys. We're going to miss you guys tremendously, but we're excited for the next season of your life as well. So we love you guys. I'm going to give this to Pam. Yeah, I just want to add my gratefulness for both of you that you're just amazing and just the love of God and the grace of God just shines through you and your hospitality and just all the different things. And of course, my grandkids, I was very happy to be able to have them when you were investing in their lives. And I know that it just made it so much easier for them to transition into classes and all those kinds of things, as well as my kids. They're just they're just totally blown away and love you guys so much and your whole family. And so we just are grateful for that. And do you want me to pray? Or? Okay. I will, I'll start prayer. I love it. So Lord, I thank you so much for Brian and for Denise, Lord. 
Lord, and we thank you for their whole family, God. And we thank you as they go to Gardnerville, Lord, it will never be the same because this couple, this amazing couple, are bringing the presence and the atmosphere of the Holy Spirit with them to that city and adding to whatever is already there. There must be something there or something that they're adding to, Lord, because that's where you're sending them. And Lord, we bless their new place. We bless, Lord, everything they put their hands to that it's going to prosper. And Father, we're just so grateful of the people that we get to meet along the way. But one thing we know for sure, we're on call. And Lord, as we're on call, we get to see and enjoy one another in heaven, Lord. But meanwhile, we go other places and we just allow the love of Jesus to spread more and more. So we thank you for this amazing couple and we just bless them in Jesus' name. God, we thank you so much for Brian and Denise. God, again, I thank you for the gift they are again in our lives, God, in this church, God, but in your kingdom, God, again, we cover them right now, God. We plead your blood from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet, God, I pray. God, we cover their finances, their health, God, their children, their children's children, God. I thank you, God, that the, their faithfulness, God, is changing legacy, God, over their children, God, that their yes, God, has changed generations, God. So I pray, God, wherever you take them right now, God, in this new city. God, I pray, bless them right now. God, I pray, open up doors that only you can open. God, give them opportunities, God, to shine the light of the good news of you, Jesus Christ, God, everywhere they go. God, I pray for a new season, God, of just um, no striving, God, of just rest, God, of restored joy, God, of reconciliation over their lives, over their children, God, and just abundant blessing, God, in Jesus' name. God, just as you gave them to us, God, as a gift in this house, God, again, we put them back into your hands, God. We ask, bless them, God. Multiply them, God. Use them, God, to be your hands and feet everywhere they go. God, we just say we love them. We cover them right now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Come on, good. Love you guys. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was awesome, man. Good. good. Love you very much. Good to see you. Yeah. Come on. That's the cool thing we get to do. It's sad when people leave or God takes them into a new season. But again, I want to encourage you guys. There's, there's covering that happens. Amen. So again, I, I don't know. I'm not going to preach. Pam's going to preach today. But um, here's the deal. So many churches, churches of family. So when people leave, again, there's different, a lot of times people leave out of offense. If you've been to a church like that, maybe you're here because in that thing, hopefully I'm not going to twist your heart too much right now, right? But um, I want to encourage you guys, the enemy is never going to be able to take you out from the outside. He'll always take us out from the inside, right? And that's always offense. It's always bitterness. It's resentment. It's, um, man, little things that cause division in the body of Christ. And again, at the end of the day, you notice all the media and the news, whenever something happens bad in the church, that's what they celebrate, right? That's what they post on social media. That's what they go. So people go out and say, man, I don't want anything to do with that. You and I are the only Jesus that most people are ever going to see. So when we, again, here at the bridge, when we talk about walking in unity and love, I want to encourage you guys, do that. Be committed to that. Walk in the forgiveness with one another, because when you do that, you're able to walk underneath the covering and the grace and the faithfulness of God over your life. You'll be able to walk in the blessing of that, because I promise you, every single one of us are not perfect. Amen? Hallelujah. It, hallelujah, right? We all are not going to be perfect until we see Jesus face to face. And so when we walk in love and grace and forgiveness with one another and we champion one another, cheer one another on, why? Because we're each and every one of us just sons and daughters of the King. Guess what happens? The world sees. That's why it says in the word, Father, make them one as you and I are one so the world may know. And guess what? When we offend one another, when we cause strife or hurt to one another, forgive. Forgive. Why? So that your heavenly father might forgive you. That's in your Bible, right? Man, I don't know about you. I want to be forgiven, right? Carrying around a U-Haul in my backpack called life of bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness and offense. That's junk. Amen. I pray, I pray you and I are free from that in our lives. Why? Because we glorify him. When we carry that around, it dishonors our God and our father. 
And then when we're able to leave church in this way, where we're able to pray and bless it, there's covering over that. Amen? It's incredible, man. God honors that. So again, no, our heart here at the bridge is not that you just come sing Christian Kumbaya and hear an inspiring message. Our heart is that you become part of a family. Amen? That you're cut underneath the covering and the authority that God has placed over this house, over your life as well. Amen? Hallelujah. Good? You guys got that. I don't know if second service will get that. We'll see you. Amen. Can we give Pam a round of applause? Come on. Come on. Good. We're going to cut. We're going to stand hands. Yeah. Oh, good. We're going to stand hands. We're going to pray for Pastor Pam. Come on. God, thank you so much for Pastor Pam. God, I thank you for her. I thank you for her heart, Jesus. Again, I thank you for the spiritual mom she is in this house, God, in this region, God. I bless her right now. I pray, Holy Spirit, God, supernatural boldness and confidence over her. God, I thank you, God, that the message that you placed in her heart, God, that you've deposited, God, is meant to be sowed and planted into our hearts today so that it might bring forth fruit and fruit that remains. God, again, I thank you for her. I thank you for the role model she's been, God, for her grace, God, for her faithfulness, God, for her unwavering faith to serve you, God, to honor you, God, to, to train up her children in the way of the Lord, God, to be able to speak into our lives and in this house. God, again, I cover her right now. I thank you for her, God. We bless her. We receive the message that you place into her. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you. Yeah. Well, good morning. And for the 50th time, happy Mother's Day, but that's okay. We love, we love family and we love our mothers and um, I love this woman and I'm so glad that she is really the mother of this house. So I just want to say this morning, no, it's, it's not because she can be herself. You know, it's interesting when you hand the baton to people sometimes, you can get a lot of friction and stuff, but there's not been any friction. It's all been great. There's not like we're in here competing with one another or any of that kind of stuff. We all are who we are and we just play our part and then God gets glory and that's the main thing. But you know, I had somebody say to me this morning, it's going to take me a second. I had somebody say to me this morning or not this morning, earlier the week. Well, you know, if it wasn't for fathers, there'd be no mothers. And that's like, I'm like, yeah. And if there wasn't for mother, if it wasn't for mothers, there'd be no fathers. So I'm glad we have two separate days because we need to honor them both. And so in the midst of it, uh, I just want to you know, I just want to say how thankful I am for all of you, for this place, for this house. You know, I just want to echo what Pastor Justin said, and that is, it's, it's too short of a time to hold grudges, to get offended. Just let it go, because we're going to be spending eternity together, and so we don't want to look across the room and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe they're here, or oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm here, or whatever. But anyway, um, but you know, when I walk in, a lot of times I sense and feel a lot of things and um, I feel the joy and I feel the peace and I feel the goodness of God, but I also feel the grieving. And I asked Katie if she'd come up here today because, Pastor Katie, because she actually prayed yesterday such beauty, beauty, beautiful, excuse me, beautiful prayers. I'm not speaking in tongues, I'm just <laughs> getting my words here. Um, but anyway, she, she prayed such a beautiful prayer for all the women yesterday. And I want to include the guys too, because some of you have lost mothers, some of you have lost loved ones. And anytime we have any kind of celebration, guess what? We feel they're missing, but, um, at the same time, we can rejoice in the memories. And I just want to, um, just want to say that, She's just going to pray over us today as moms and as those who have lost loved ones and um, just to release the peace and the comfort of God. So, uh, Yeah, yesterday we, were, we had our Mother's Day brunch, which was beautiful, and ladies did an amazing job contributing to that. But uh, one of the things leading into it was God just really put it on my heart. Like I kind of briefly said, <clears throat> and announcements was, this isn't the easiest day. This isn't the easiest day for a lot of moms or even families, whether recently losing their moms, or maybe it's been 20 years since you've lost your mom, but it's still not an easy day, or relationship-wise, not having an easy relationship uh, with your mother or maybe even your children. There's, there's stuff there. And so um, 
just one of the things in that God put on my heart was in 2 Timothy, where um, it was Timothy's grandmother and mother's faith. And because of their faith, Timothy had faith. And so that was just so heavy on my heart of the authority and the power as moms and grandmas that we have to pray into our kids and grandkids that really changes generations. And I know that my personal family has been changed by this. My, um, because of my mom, my parents' choice to become believers and followers of Christ, my life was changed. And from a young age, I was able to meet Jesus and live and grow up in the church and biblical foundation and beliefs. And I know because of that, it is because of their sacrifice and their yes, I am where I am today. But I say that all to say they did not have parents with that same understanding. So they had to choose to turn. They had to choose to start a new family legacy and a new family generational curses being broken and changing the generations to come. You may be that first generation in your family line. And it's not going to be easy, but the reward of that for yourself and your kids and the generations to come is invaluable. So I say that to say that the power of your prayers as moms and grandmas, I didn't have a grandma praying for me, but I had a mom that prayed for me. But now guess what? My kids get a grandma and a mom that prays for them. And the next generation will get that from there on out because of the stand that my parents made. So I say all that to say it starts with you and the choice that you make. So I just want to pray a grace and a peace over moms um, as they walk that out in their home. So can you pray with me? God, right now, I just thank you for each and every mom in this, in this building, God, that it's not necessarily maybe a, a physical child, but maybe they are a spiritual mother or grandmother to young women and ladies or even kids um, that you've placed in their life, God. So God, I just pray a continued peace over them. God, I pray for wisdom for moms, Lord God, and how to just train up your children in the way that sh they should go, Lord God, from a young age all the way into adulthood, Lord God. We never stop needing our mom's guidance and wisdom, no matter how old we get, God. So I just thank you for continued wisdom and strength for moms in this room, Lord God. God, I, d I pray for just a peace and a comfort over um, ladies who have maybe lost their moms recently or this is a tough day because of relationship or God, you know the life circumstances that, that wrap around the emotions of this day and this weekend, Lord God. And maybe it is as a mother who has desperately wanted a, a, to um, have a child of her own. Lord God, I just pray, Lord, that you would just reveal yourself to them, your heart for them, your peace and comfort over them, Lord God, as they navigate this day, Lord God. God, I thank you for the amazing moms, Lord God. It's not by chance that you made us with a nurturing, loving, compassion heart for your young children, Lord God, that we can raise them um, to be lovers of the Christ, Lord God, lovers of you, Lord Jesus, in our home, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that it is. It's the mother's calming voice after birth that bring, that soothes the baby. It's the mother's touch that soothes the baby and brings comfort, Lord God. That was designed starting in the womb, that bonding process. And so we just thank you that you ornately made each and every one of us to be mothers, Lord God, to raise children for you and your kingdom and your glory, Lord. So I just thank you for that, God. I thank you for the celebration of moms today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That's awesome. Okay, do you feel better now? I feel better. I feel a lot better. And I want to, again, say thank you for the privilege of being able to share today. Because I think it kind of segues into what is happening in our world today. But it also uh, stirs us up to realize that our our position and when we've been born and how we've been born and the family that we're in and all those kinds of things is not a coincidence, but it is actually ordained by God. And right in the midst of today, I believe that God wants to stir up women to be spiritual moms if you're not a physical mom. 
because it talks about the older women teaching the younger women. I mean, finally qualify for the older women, but I'm not going to tell you how, I, how old I am to qualify for that. It's just a number. It's just a number. Um, but anyway, when my mom passed away personally, um, I had to face the fact that there was grief going on. But at the same time, I realized that God was, was stretching me to something beyond grief. And that was to re- understand and, and see his goodness and begin to allow that goodness to turn my heart toward others so I could bless others. And all of a sudden, I thought about Jesus when John the Baptist, his cousin, passed away. They beheaded him. And he got the report. And what he ended up doing was he went in a boat with his disciples to a lonely place. And he was wanting to take time to grieve. And when his boat comes to shore, all the people had come where he was. And when he looked upon them, he felt compassion. He was moved. And so he turned his grief into an actual opportunity to begin to bless and heal people. And I I caught a little glimpse of a little key there that if I will allow the grief that my heart has experienced to expand, to begin to understand God's goodness in a new way, and then turn that grief into an opportunity to bless and to heal, that there was actually redemption in the process that began a whole journey for me saying, Lord, I want to understand more and more what this looks like. And so as I started thinking about it, I started realizing, you know what? I think God's stretching me more into the area of understanding how supernatural God is. You know, sometimes we can think about God, he's up there, he helps me when I'm like in a crisis or something, but actually he is supernatural. And that means that he's beyond natural. He's extraordinary. He's beyond ordinary. He's extraordinary. And so in the midst of it, as I was thinking about that, the thing that I started meditating on and that I've been processing this since the time that I knew I was going to speak today, which I have lots of notes, but we're not going to get to them all, but hopefully I'm going to whet your appetite to get into the word and get into what I'm going to share here today because I'm going to give you some secrets to extraordinary miracles. How many of you would like me like to, okay, come on. I think we got the right people here today. Lord, thank you. I think this is the right message. Come on. Or so I say, thank you. This was because he's in, you know, if you know Jesus, he's inside of you, right? The God, the extraordinary God is inside of you. And so he wants to give us insight. So I know we're going to pray again, but I mean, we need help. Father, we thank you for your presence and your word. We want to receive all that you want to impart to us today, Lord. If you want to put your hand on your heart just like me, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine too. But anyway, Holy Spirit, I honor you. You are the true teacher who brings us revelation. So I ask you today to speak to me. Would you just ask the Lord to speak to you today? Because he will. He has you here and he wants to share with you. Lord, I'm listening to you. Lord, teach us your ways. Lord, we're in a confusing world right now. We need to know your ways. And we thank you as believers in you, our supernatural God, that you desire that we don't function on our own understanding, living a normal, natural, intellectual life. But you paid for us to be examples of your nature, love, character, wisdom, grace, and you want to release your supernatural power and presence and wisdom everywhere we go, not just on church days and Sunday and around church people, everywhere we go, in the mighty name of Jesus, if you agree with that, would you just say amen? Amen. Come on. So in answer to the question, okay, what are some of the secrets to extraordinary miracles, Lord? So I had to think about the word extraordinary. So I could go in this big litany, but I'll just give you a couple words. Very unusual, remarkable, exceptional, amazing, astonishing, astounding, sensational. I could go on and on, but I will move to the word miracle. So what is a miracle according to the dictionary? A miracle is a surprising and welcome event that is not explicable by nature 
or scientific laws and is therefore considered to be the work of a divine agency. Well, we know who that divine agency is. It's our supernatural God. He is amazing. And so God our Father specializes. He specializes in making ordinary people. How many ordinary people do we have here? I mean, I, I think of myself as ordinary. But he specializes in making ordinary people extraordinary. Can you turn to the person next to you and say, I'm extraordinary. And if you don't know Jesus, you can be extraordinary today too. We can just invite you to, at the end, just to be extraordinary. Come on, all of us here. And so our God is supernatural. And in fact, as believers in Jesus, he called us. He called us to live an, not an ordinary life, but an extraordinary life. Because that's what Jesus paid for. Did you know that's what Jesus paid for? He didn't just die on the cross for us to go to heaven. He died so we could live an extraordinary life because he's an extraordinary God. And now where does he live if we've accepted him into our lives? Where does he live now? In us. So sometimes he's in there saying, let me out, let me out. I want to be extraordinary, and we're just going about our everyday life. Well, today, I want to challenge you like I challenged myself and the Holy Spirit challenged me. It's time to step out of the boat. Uh-oh. What is she going to say to us? Okay, well, get ready. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time to be extraordinary. If, G if you receive Jesus, Jesus lives in you. So it's not us trying to do something special for God. It's actually God wanting to do something special for us. And as we freely receive, we can freely give it away. That's our job. Give it away. Give it away. And so what does he mean by that? Well, one thing, he wants to, us to know that he is, this is going to be three big words, but it's very important that you understand this is who God is. Because he's supernatural, how many know that he is all-knowing? Omnipotent, all-knowing, okay? So he knows everything. How many of you know that he is everywhere present? Wow, that makes him even bigger. He's present everywhere, okay? How many of you know that he's omnipotent? That means all-powerful, getting pretty crowded in there. Come on. All-knowing, all-powerful, everywhere present. That's who lives inside of you, our supernatural God. And what is he wanting to do? Do you know that he is wanting to work in your everyday life? Not just here when we see one another and we love each other and those kinds of things, but wherever we go, the grocery store, gas station, in our homes. Ooh, Okay. That supernatural God wants to work in and through our lives. So Jesus reveals to us that it's not complicated. I think sometimes we want to think, well, when I'm perfect, then I'll really let him out of the box because that's when it'll be powerful. No, he wants to just use you in your everyday life. In your weakness, it says he is strong. And in the midst of it, we are going to talk about that. So he simply shares with us in John 15, 19, a lifestyle and an example for us to follow. He says, follow me, right? That's what he says, follow me. That sounds pretty simple. Where you go, I go. Where, what you think, I think. What you say, I say. So when we see God doing things, and this is a whole, this is a whole other message, this whole idea of how do you see, what do you see, all those kinds of things. But he simply is saying to us, follow me. And so I want to turn to um, John chapter 2, verse 1 through 11 in the Amplified Version, because this is where Jesus begins to reveal some things to us about the secret of extraordinary miracles. And so I'm going to read this out for us. Some of the details I'm going to add into it are going to be historical. I loved what Amy did. That was awesome. Things that you think about, historical things and cultural things that all kind of fit into this. And sometimes it's not always in the actual text. And so I'm going to start with the first part, uh, the first verse. On the third day, 
there was a wedding at Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. So just a little bit of history about the wedding and some Jewish traditions is that possibly Mary was either related to or a good friend of the bridegroom and the bride. So she had some responsibilities that she was doing during the wedding for making the arrangements and being sure everything went smoothly. Even though they had a manager, she was behind the scenes doing some things. Jesus was also invited to the wedding with his disciples. And when the wine was all gone, now let me just tell you, that is a major issue going on here because in the Middle East, your um, sense of, oh, you did a great job or you're totally humiliated is based on your hospitality and whether or not you had enough food, how it went, all those kinds of things. So the wine running out is a big deal and Mary is a part of all these arrangements that are supposed to be taking place. And not having the provisions would be a major problem. It could actually bring humiliation to the bride and the groom. Now, Jesus was aware of all of this. He's in this situation. And so when the wine is all gone, Jesus said to her, she came to Jesus and she told him that the wine's all gone. That's all she said. The wine's all gone. And Jesus said to her, dear woman, what is that to you and me? Why or what do we have in common? Leave it to me. My time, hour to act, has not yet come. And so if you just read that, it can kind of seem like, well, that seems a little harsh, or that seems a little strange, or that kind of thing. But actually, what the phrase, it was like a common phrase that was used, is basically saying in a conversational phrase, it means don't worry, you don't quite understand what is going on, leave things to me and I will settle them in my own way. Jesus was simply telling Mary to leave things to him that he would have his own way of dealing with the situation. Now, kind of in between the lines, this is the first public miracle, which we'll see at the end. But prior to that, Mary had been with Jesus for 30 years, raising him, all these things behind the scenes. It really makes you kind of wonder, why would she go to him And all of a sudden, put these questions before him. And then, Jesus was saying, you don't understand what's going on. Basically, our private relationship is over. It's going into public ministry. And because it's going into public ministry, we're not going to relate the same ever again. I mean, that's quite an amazing and astounding thought. And as I read some of the historical commentaries and stuff, I thought, that must have been really quite an awakening moment for Jesus in the midst of it, realizing the same way they related the things that they did were not going to be the same. But his mother just acted like she didn't even hear what he said. You know, she said, she turns to the servants and she said, whatever he says, do it. Well, that tells you that she had total confidence in whatever he was going to say or do. Apparently she had some history with that kind of thing going on at home. And all of a sudden, They're in a public situation, and things were going to start happening. And so there's a lot of different details that I could go into, but I'm not going to. Um, uh, There were six water pots of stone, all these different things, standing there as the Jewish custom of purification, ceremonial washing demanded, holding 20 to 30 gallons apiece, which is a statement as well. Jesus said, fill the water pots with water. He didn't say, he knew, I mean, people could think, fill the water pots with water. Well, we need wine. I don't get what you're doing here. Fill the water pots with water. So they filled them up to the brim. And then he said to them, draw out some now and take it to the manager of the feast, to the one presiding, the superintendent of the banquet. So they took some. And when the manager tasted the water, just now, thank you, Abigail, I'm telling you, you're amazing. Not knowing where it came from, Though the servants who had drawn the water knew, he called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone else serves the best wine first. And when the people have drunk freely, then he serves that which is not so good. But you have kept back the good wine until now. This is the first sign, his first signs, miracles, and wonder works. Jesus performed in Canaan of Galilee and manifested his glory. By it displayed his greatness and his power openly. First time. 
and his disciples believed in him, adhered to and trusted and, re and relied on him. And so what can we learn? Because this is the first miracle, the law of first mention, which talks about when it's mentioned the first time, there are some keys and secrets in the midst of these scriptures that you can glean from. So we're going to go through those things, and it's eight of them, and it's going to be fast, and we'll all be great. So first of all, Mary knew that Jesus was God's son, and it was a supernatural birth. So number one, God was present at the wedding. Think about that. God was present at the wedding. Number two, the more you are aware of God's presence, it opens the door for the miraculous to happen in and through your life. That's really important and really key. From knowing it in your heart to responding in some kind of manifestation outwardly is that the more you're aware of God's presence wherever you are, it opens the door for the miraculous to happen in and through your life. Number three, when the wine runs out, run to Jesus. That's what this is saying. Whenever there's a crisis or not a crisis, run to Jesus. Go to him. He has miracles in store for us that we don't even think of because we're busy trying to figure out what he's, what's going on in our situation. Run to Jesus. When the wine runs out, go to the vine. When God works as we acknowledge and recognize our need for a miracle, God we need a miracle here. Mary was so confident that she didn't hesitate to go to him. It wasn't even a second thought. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, But he, the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. How many weak people do we have here? I'm not afraid or ashamed to say, I'm weak. I'm weak. I can't do it. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know how the stock market is going. I don't know this. I don't, I don't know a lot. But one thing I do know is he does. He knows. And the first thing we can do in running to him and admitting that weakness is realize we are candidates for his strength and his power. Whatever we're going through, we are candidates for his strength and power. And so in the midst of it, we can boast about our weaknesses not saying, look at me, but to say, look to Jesus. Look to God. The power of Christ may rest upon us. So don't look at your weakness as a negative. Instead of like, well, you know, I'm so weak, I can't, I can't, I can't. Realize it's a positive that God wants to work in that very area of your life. And he doesn't care just about the big things. He cares about everything. Even when the wine runs out. Even when something that seems to be menial is like, oh, well, that's not a big deal. Maybe God isn't interested in that. He's interested in every single thing. Think of it. If he knows the number of hairs on your head, I mean, I don't even count the number of hairs on my kids' heads. And then you lose some. And then it's like, does he keep a, a running tally? Or how does this work? But that's pretty personal. And that's pretty, it could be insignificant. I mean, do I, well, I guess if I got down to one hair, I wouldn't really like that idea. But the thing is, is that in the midst of whatever is going on, God himself is saying, I care about everything in your life. So take Mary's instruction. Number four, whatever he says, just do it. Don't argue about it. Don't think about it. Don't reason it out. Just do it. Jesus told the servants to fill the water pots, signifying, number five, we have a part to play. We do the ordinary and God does the extraordinary. Would you say that to the person next to you? God does the ex extraordinary. All I have to do is the ordinary. All I have to do is the ordinary. Number eight, obedience creates a pathway for God's extraordinary miracles. When we obey, that's when the miracles start being released. It was pouring the water into the, in the water pot. It was little things, giving your lunch, taking your lunch, whatever it is that's going on in your life. You have the little thing to add, but God does the big thing. And you know what? We get to go along for the ride. I love it. It's like, wow, what adventure are we going to do today? Do I really want to know? Well, or am I, do I want to be surprised in the middle of it? Whatever the deal is, run to Jesus. That's the point. I know I'm harping on this, but I've lived it. I believe it. You've lived it. We believe it. Come on. Number seven, 
we need to yield our thinking to outside the box. Not just our way of thinking or doing things. And you know what? God's thinking usually is always outside the box. So we got to get out of the box, let him be God, and we'll be ourselves with Jesus living big in and through us. And number eight, keep an eternal perspective. God's results have long-term consequences or outcomes. We are still talking about this miracle over 2,000 years later. I mean, that's pretty impactful. I don't know any marketing or branding company that has that kind of thing. I mean, you can think about commercials and jingles that you can remember, but they aren't on the TV anymore or the internet or whatever media. But honestly, this story is still releasing faith for people to believe the supernatural God who does extraordinary miracles. And all he is asking for us to do is to say, here am I. I want to follow you. Show me what you're up to and I will be responsive by your grace. But I want to say the first extraordinary miracle in our lives is the miracle of a relationship with our supernatural God. I heard somebody down there say, yes, so right. As he has made a way for us to become his sons and daughters. John 3.16, which many people have heard. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten unique son. So that whoever, whoever, he's not saying you have to do this, you have to do that. Whoever believes in him, trusts, clings, relies on. Him shall not perish, come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. Come on, you guys. This is amazing. Our God is amazing. And even now, he's whispering in some of your ears, I just want to have a relationship with you. I just want to be a part of your life. I just want to show you who I really am. I just want you to know my goodness, my love, my mercy. I just want you to know what kind of transformation and adventures I have for you. And if you haven't yielded yourself to God and say, I want that too, Father. We can take just a moment today. And as the prayer team is coming, there are a lot of people here who have experienced that same understanding that our God, so powerful, so good, so awesome, loves us so much and really wants us to experience what it's like to be a new creation in him, to have a new identity that goes from carrying the weight of our sin and decisions to becoming a new creation with a new life of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And so today, it's just a simple acknowledgement. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Call upon him, he will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you don't know of. Our God is miraculous and amazing, but at the same time, he's very practical. And he has all kinds of wondrous things that he can reveal to you. Things like how to fix things sometimes. You know, people didn't get the inventions on their own. God himself revealed himself in his goodness. And so today we can ask our almighty heavenly father to come into our lives. And I just asked if Fred would just come and would you just lead everybody in prayer? I just want to close this up because I want you to know this same Heavenly Father that I know and I don't think I can actually express and pray. So I just want to, I felt like this morning that uh, there's three kinds of people here besides those that you just need to know Jesus, <clears throat> that God wants to really help you today. Uh, one is in the area of, I just, I just, I'm caught in some kind of bondage, whatever it would be. It could be a bondage to depression or to discouragement or to whatever. 
God wants to really help you today and give you the grace that you need to overcome. Number two, there's people here uh, that you have been hurt and offended and God wants you to let go of that offense, but he wants to heal your heart from the wounds of that offense. And then the third are people that are just brokenhearted. Uh, you, just, you just feel like, I just, need, um, I just need a touch from God today. God is here. Let's all say that. God is, God is here. He's right here right now. He loves you. He's for you. He's not against you. He wants to touch your life. So let's all stand up. And if you're in any of those categories and you would like to receive that, I'm just going to pray for you. Uh, just would you just lift your hand up and say, you know, that's me. I need a, I need God to touch my life this morning. Yeah, come on, just say that's me. I need, I need help today. Come on, free prayer. We're not charging for this one. Come on. So Lord, we thank you. Your word says that you. The Spirit of the Lord was upon you because you came to set the captives free, to bind up the brokenhearted. You came to restore us to the original purpose for which you created us. God, we pray right now. We thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, that you are the miracle-working Jesus. Hallelujah. And that you're here right now. Church is not just, we're not just trying to tick off a thing. We came to church today. We did our little thing. But we came to encounter you. To encounter your power, your glory, your goodness, and especially your love. Lord, we just release your presence here right now in the name of Jesus. We pray those that are offended, the wounds that they've uh, received from that, we ask you to heal those. Those that are bound in some way uh, with some kind of addiction of any kind, Father, in the name of Jesus, you said we will set the captives free. We'll, your word says we'll cast out demons. So Lord, we come against anything that the enemy has designed against these that are here this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we say be free in Jesus' name. And then, Lord, those that are hurting, those that are brokenhearted, we invite your love to come. Wrap your arms around them right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are still doing what you did 2,000 years ago. You're still lifting us up, encouraging us, helping us, healing us. We thank you for that today. We're not going to leave the same way we came in. We're going to leave with the touch of God in our heart and in our life. We pray that. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you raise your hand or you need prayer for anything, make sure as we close that you come up here. These people are trained to pray for you, uh, ready and willing. They are here because they love you. Uh, let them have that advantage to pray for you. In the meantime, I pray a blessing on you and all the moms. Come on. Amen. I was born very close to my mother. <clears throat> All you moms, we thank, we're thankful for you. <laughs> bless you today. Amen. God bless you all.